I'm Lindsay. And I'm Kathy from the Kindergarten Kiosk Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect those of others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Educational Duct Tape Podcast with Jake Miller. Hello, duct tapers. How are you guys doing today? So today is a mini episode, and normally I have this mini episode audio that plays at the beginning that's the same every single two weeks. I don't know if you've noticed it before or not, but today is a little bit different because, number one, this episode wasn't actually recorded live on a site, which you'll hear about during the episode, and also it's a little bit longer than usual. So normally in that intro, I say this was recorded live at an event or a conference or something like that. This one wasn't, and you'll understand soon why. And also, there's normally a part of that introduction that talks about how normal, regular length episodes have the opportunity for you to submit a certain code to get a certificate for listening, laughing, and learning to turn in for professional development credits or whatever you might need to do with it. And normally, the mini episodes don't because they're so short. But Missy Payden, who I talked to today, and I talked for so long, we were just so excited to talk that we reached a full half an hour. So I figured, why not give a half an hour credit for this one? So... Later in the episode, you'll find out what the super secret code is, and then you will head over to eduducttape.com slash certificates to type in that code and get your credit for listening today. Last thing I want to share is that this episode is just such a fun one. I'm so happy with how this one turned out. Missy is awesome, and our discussion was awesome. If you work with either A, uh, teachers who teach primary level students, tell them to listen to this episode. If you work with teachers who have been in the classroom for more than a year, like Missy and myself, and maybe like Missy used to be, maybe a little intimidated by technology, tell them to listen to this episode. And if you work with teachers who are scared to admit in front of their students when they don't know how to do something and might need somebody's help, tell them to listen to this episode. That pretty much covers just about everybody. And here's the rest of people. If you work with educators who maybe don't give much choice in their classroom to students for how they do their learning, tell them to listen to this episode because we talk about Missy going from teaching teaching for 18 years, most of which without technology, to now being a tech leader in her building, working with first graders, integrating new technologies every day, admitting when she doesn't know how to do things, leveraging the help of tech coaches in her district, and building in choice boards in her classroom. I'm just so excited for you guys to hear this episode. But before it starts, one last thing I have to talk about. This is a little bit awkward. Missy and I talk early in this episode about how we both have colds at the time of this recording. This was in, I think, mid-January when Missy and I recorded this. Now, when the episode's coming out, we're in the middle of what appears to be a global pandemic dealing with the coronavirus. Very serious stuff. Lots of challenges for educators, lots of challenges for families, lots of, of challenges for the global community of people. I hope that you are okay. I hope that your students are okay. I hope that your friends are okay. I hope that your families are okay. If you've been impacted by school closings or anything like that, I hope that it's going well. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to support you. Remember, the most important thing is the well-being and happiness of yourself and your families and your students. But anyhow, speaking of happiness, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Today's guest. All right, well, I'm here today with my friend Missy Payton. Missy and I are re-recording an episode that we recorded so beautifully a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, and and now this is cursed because not only did the recording get lost from that day, but now we both are re-recording with colds, and so we're going to have to pause regularly to hack and cough. Hold on one second. <laughs> and maybe I'll leave that one in for everybody. <laughs> Oh, oh there's Missy's. <laughs> <laughs> and this is true. Like we're we're recording a podcast for educators, and everybody can re- like understand the fact that it is winter in Ohio, and everyone has at least is either starting to get a cold, is in the middle of a cold, or is at the end of a cold because we all are around children all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so Missy was at the educational duct tape workshop with me at Kent State University and their research center for educational technology back in December. And at the end of the day, Missy and I recorded an episode and it, it was phenomenal. And I went to air it a couple weeks later and the recording had disappeared. And I talked about that in an episode a little while back. Uh, when I was planning on airing the interview with Missy. So today we're going to reenact it. We're going to pretend we're both in our in our mind space, going to pretend we're sitting in the AT&T classroom in Molten Hall at Kent State University, not uh, at separate computers uh, <laughs> with a pile of tissues next to each of us right now. <laughs> so before we do that, though, Missy, can you give us a little background on, on who you are, what you do, where we're at and stuff like that? Sure. Thanks for having me on. 
I am a first grade teacher at Streetsboro City Schools, Streetsboro, Ohio. And I'm also the tech aide for our building, which is a pre-K through third grade. And I help out with extra tech integration and things learning for our staff. And this is my 18th year. And last year, at the beginning of the year, we had converted over to Google, with Gmail, Google Drive a little bit. And Mm -hmm. I didn't really know that much about it. And Mm -hmm. then our district offered a Google cohort. So once a week for a semester before school, really early, like 7 a.m. And we went over learning all things Google. And I just blew up basically like there is so many amazing things that you can do with this tool yeah. that I didn't even know were possible. So then I ended up, I joined a uh, Google cohort two and I got Google level one and two certified. Nice. And so I've just been keeping going and I'm thinking about going for the next level, the, the trainer certified trainer. Nice. Yeah. I'm thinking this summer. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, been, it's been fun like connecting with you, you know, over Twitter and through the workshop and stuff like that throughout this past year and, and, and through the podcast as well, because it's, it's been really cool just seeing your excitement grow about these things, uh, you know, as, as you became, became aware of them and, you know, and have you taken on a tech leadership, you know, role in your building as, as that tech right. aid position, is this your first year doing that? Yes. Yes. Cool. So I was really excited to have the opportunity yeah, cool. to do it. That's so great. I, I really have gotten good feedback from people in our district also like, wow, you're so excited and it's coming through and now I'm excited. Yeah. And, which, which is the point. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and seeing it coming from like a quote unquote one of us, you know what I mean? Where, where you've been in the classroom with them in the building right. for years and them seeing your excitement going, well, well, you know, oh, if Missy's this excited about, there must be, you know, this must be legit, right? Yeah. And after 18 years, usually, you know, I should be like, oh, <laughs> right. But, you know, like every, <laughs> I'm, I, I really am just excited and invigorated by it. And, you know, and there's so much to learn. Right. I haven't even scratched the surface. And, it's just amazing That's and great. seeing the kids and their engagement and what they're capable of just blows my mind. Yeah. That's real. So is your building K to K to four, K to three, what are the ages in your building? It's pre K to three. Pre K to three. And that's cool as a first grade, first grade, right? Right. First grade right. teacher to see like uh, there, there's a lot of people out there who believe, you know, that technology integration really kind of starts after after first grade, oh, yeah. you know, you know, and, and t- for you as a primary teacher, as a first grade teacher, who's been doing it since, since really, you know, 18 years, like back then the inter- internet wasn't, you know, that, that big of a, a role in our center schooling. No. Like we were maybe entering our grades online. No, we weren't. I started, we were handwriting them. Yeah. Every student's report card, handwriting it. Yeah. So for other oh. educators to see you starting from, you know, 18 years ago, what it was like then to what it's like now and teaching first graders and being excited right. and using it and, you know, taking risks in your classroom to try out new things. That's, that's got to be super inspirational for the people around you. Yeah. And it is. And I think a lot of people, you know, change, yeah. we don't like change. Right. And so, you know, it seems like in the primary grades, people are like, we have to stick with what we're, we're doing. You know, they have to do paper, pencil, they have to well, yeah, they need to do that. Mm-mm. But when you think of their future and where they're going to be when they enter the workforce, right. the technology probably won't even be invented yet. Right. So for them to be able to start problem solving now mm-hmm. and learning these things, and yes, writing with a pencil and typing. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of them are so comfortable on laptop, Chromebooks, iPads, you know, everything, because they use them so much at home. Right. So they're excited to do that. And then you can see their growth both ways. Mm -hmm. Like if someone, if they're writing a sentence or they're typing a sentence, I can see, did they use a capital? Did they use punctuation? You know, it's just a different tool, which is, you know, your edge of duct tape, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But you're seeing, you're prioritizing what you're trying to get from the kid, what you're trying to achieve for the kid. And you're using the pencil and paper when that's appropriate. And you're using the technology when that's appropriate. And you're not taking one away uh, for the other. You're not using one at the expense of the other. You're using whatever's appropriate when when it best fits what you're trying to achieve for the kiddo. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. 
Cool. So at, at the workshop that you were at, at the educational duct tape workshop, just to, for the, you know what happened, although we <laughs> both, with our colds, maybe we forget a little bit, uh, but the <laughs> listeners might not know what happened. So the way the workshop went, it was a full day workshop. We started with me kind of talking about what educational duct tape is, which Missy is a duct taper, so she's already in the know, but some of the other people were like, who is this Jake guy? Um, and Missy's like, hey, Jake. <laughs> but we, we started talking about what educational duct tape is and what kind of the mindset is about how we think about technology as a tool that we're using to solve problems or meet goals or address a learning standard. And once we kind of got in that mindset, then everybody identified what are some goals or needs or problems or verbs that they're trying to work on or attack in their classroom. And then we kind of worked together to identify what we're going to do about it, what, what our nouns are going to be, what tools we're going to learn. And then everybody had uh, it, it was about an hour and a half or so to start actually learning how to use their new tool and starting to prepare to use it potentially in the classroom the next day. Well, maybe it was a Friday, so maybe not the next day, but the next day in the room, they started using the thing. Right. So what what was the the goal that you identified or the problem that you identified? Well, what I liked was, you know, usually at workshops, you don't get to do that. You know, you don't get any time to work on, you know, you learn a lot of things, mm -hmm. but you don't get the time to say, hey, this is how I want to use it. Right. in my classroom or whatever setting. And so I liked it. And you said, I know you have more than one goal, mm -hmm. but you have to, you know, hyper-focus on this one goal because, you know, I have so many things as I learn, I'm, we need to do this. We've got to try right. this. So it was really nice to focus. And I decided to give my kids digital choice boards okay. where they could, whatever learning that we're sharing they have a choice in how to share it and how to go about learning about it, presenting it to each other and um, sharing it. And so all last year, and that was my learning, but these kids this year, I was able to start right away in September. Mm -hmm. You know, we use Google Docs, we've used slides, we've used everything separately. Mm -hmm. And so now with the choice board, I want them to, now you know how these tools, which tool is best for you to share your learning. And so I decided to start with a Google Doc okay. and have some links with some choices on it. And, you know, I, I think, and I've seen this just in the, you know, small work I've done with them, that they get so much more creative and engaged when they're excited about it. Right. And choosing, getting to have choice, even, you know, um, just something, you know, you can choose Legos or you can choose puzzles or you can choose cubes, mm -hmm. you know, just having choice gets them excited and yeah. to help them be in control of their learning. Right. We're still accomplishing all the goals, but how do they want to present it? Right. Do you want to make a Flipgrid video? Do you want to do a slides presentation? So yeah, I'm really excited and I haven't, I have it ready to go, but we haven't started it yet. Yeah. But I'm really excited to see them because they are familiar with the tools. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, what tool do you want to use right. to show learning? And um, I'm really excited. I mean, and I've seen them too. For example, Flipgrid videos. I've seen kids that are so quiet in the room. You know, those kids yeah. that they almost get looked over because they're so quiet. And they open up on their video. I was shocked the first time. I think we did like, what are you going to be for Halloween? You know, what do you, what's your favorite candy? You know, I had them do some sketch noting to give them ideas for their videos. Oh, that's cool. And, and I, I watched the videos and I'm like, I have never heard them string this many sentences together. Wow. I mean, they were just, and a couple of them, I had them make videos for uh, parent teacher conferences mm -hmm. where they were telling their parents about first grade. Mm -hmm. And I even had a parent that like broke down in tears because she was so touched by the video, which was awesome. And I hearing them be so excited and so animated. And I said, wow, you know, there were two students. I'm like, they just were like, you know, like they've been doing this for years and they go around the house and they pretend they're doing podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's like, she walks around with a phone and she's talking to it. And I'm like, see, now I would have never known that. Right. And she was great. Like right. she's been practicing. Right. You know, and so it's just seeing them open up. Yeah. That's one of the nice it's things about about using a uh, a choice board or giving the kids choice in the classroom, whether it's with a choice board or not, is that we like we we realize who the 
15 kids in our room or 12 kids or 10 kids in our room who are good at expressing themselves in the kind of standard and traditional ways and and they stand out in those ways. But if we don't give some choice at some point in time, we might never hear from those other kids. And so by giving them some choice or just even if you're not giving choice, even if you're just trying different things at different times throughout the year, you're giving different kids chances to shine. Like that kid might not be a great writer or might not be comfortable talking to you in person, but maybe on video or maybe in audio or maybe in drawing or something you can you know really get to understand their their true their true self and when we're thinking about you know assessing them for learning you know if you're just trying to see do they understand whatever concept you, you don't, it doesn't really matter what the way they're delivering that information to you is you you need them to be able to prove to you they understand it and if written is not the best way for them on that concept not that writing's not important but if if you're t- assessing something other than writing and they can't truly show their comprehension through writing, you know, giving them some choice gives them a different way to show their comprehension, right? Yes, absolutely. And it's, you know, and again, like you said, if the assessment is for writing, and that's what we're looking at. But if it's, you know, did you understand the story? Mm -hmm. Did you comprehend the story? Can you tell me, you know, some of the story elements, and they're not as skilled in writing, Mm -hmm. but, you know, typing it or doing a video or even just talking, Mm -hmm you get their understanding, right. which you might not get if you only had them write it, like giving them different avenues really helps them to express their learning. Right. And the tool can be different. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the tool so, itself isn't, isn't really important. It's the, it's the content or whatever the, you're trying to achieve. that's important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just, I can't get over, you know, I think about had I not, you know, started that Google cohort mm-hmm. and then I started through that, I made connections with other people mm-hmm. in my district that I would never see because we're all at different buildings. Mm-hmm. And then making the connection with them and then learning about what they're doing. And then, you know, then joining Twitter and so, and then, you know, learning from you mm-hmm. and, you know, Eric Kurtz and all these people. And then, you know, starting to listen to the podcast and it was growing bigger and bigger. And I know last time we talked about Sethi. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Sethi Declare, yeah. Yeah, is he in Thailand? Thailand, yeah. I'm like, all around the world, we're all working on this. Yeah. And had I not started, I never would have known. Right. Well, that, that's that adjacent possible, right? Of you, yes. you have some great ideas of your own and great practices that you've been owning for, you know, 18 years in the classroom. And that's, that's wonderful, but it really expanded as you started to you know, expose yourself to more ideas, whether it was the people from down the hallway that came to that cohort or the people from the building next door that came to that cohort or the people that you connected with on Twitter that like me live 10 or 15 minutes away or like Eric Kurtz live a half an hour away or like yeah. Sethi DeClaire who lives across the world from you, you know, you, you start connecting with them and, and those ideas kind of, um, you know, catalyze each other. That's that adjacent possible happening. There. That's really cool. And it's nice too, because at the workshop, you know, like you said, that focus on that one goal, right? Because, I go home. I sometimes have to like stop looking at Twitter and Instagram because oh, yeah. I'm constantly saving things. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great. It's on overload. Right. So it's nice yeah. to say, okay, I'm just going to focus on this. You know, I'm still going to be trying different things, but mm-hmm. to make a focus because there's so much and it's awesome. You know, yeah. if that doesn't work, let's try this, you know? Right. And, and the kids know that I'm learning too. I know the first time I was trying to do uh, Google drawings, I um, attempted it on my own because I've been working with um, Dan Stitzel, our tech coach. And Mm -hmm. he, whatever day, I'm like, I'm just going to try this today. You know, he's not here. And I didn't make a copy for each one. So when they Mm -hmm. tried to go in, they were all, all (laughs) 23 of them on the same. And they, they're like yelling and screaming, what's happening? I don't know. And, I'm like, and I go, oh, and I try to figure it out. And then I'm like, hmm, I go, you know what? This is new for me too. And I'm still learning. Let's stop. And we're going to talk with Mr. Stitzel. We're going to figure it out. And then the next day, no problem. And I think a lot right. of teachers are afraid to not know yeah. things. And it, mm-hmm. it's okay. I mean, they can get any information off the internet. Like we don't hold all of the learning, you know, they, right. you know, Jake, if you go home, you want to learn how to tap dance. You could find a YouTube video. You know, there's so much. I already know how to tap oh, dance. Okay. I'm a great tap dancer. <laughs> 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 but you know, it's like, there's so much information. So we're trying to help them, you know, learn how to use it. Right. And we're learning too. I mean, isn't that what we always say? Lifelong learners. And, yeah. you know, I'm not afraid if they see me not knowing something, I tell them, I don't know. 
let's figure it out. Yeah. yeah, that's great to model to them. And you you modeled a couple of good things. You modeled your your willingness to take those risks, but you also modeled that your willingness to come back at it again, yeah. you know, after you learn about it. like, you didn't just give up on no, it. You nice were like, day. you know, we're going to try yeah. this again tomorrow. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to, per- I'm going to persevere on this. and I'm going to come back tomorrow. But then you also monitor that you were willing to ask somebody else for help because th- there's a, there's, I think there's a stigma to doing that, yeah. but, but we need to be able to admit that not, no one person can own all of the information and all the ways of doing everything. And, and we, you know, we, we're better together as, as people say with the hashtag Absolutely. and you're, you're showing the kids, like, I know that Mr. Sitzel, knows how to do this better than I do. So I will talk to him. Yeah. But if he was teaching a group of first graders, because he's, he's not a first grade teacher by trade, he he would come to you for support on teaching the first graders. We, we know we know, and we model to the kids that we all have our different kinds of expertise and, and we, you know, use each other to help to help ourselves, you know, and help each other. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah. it's really rewarding. Yeah, totally. So a couple questions about the uh, the choice board thing before we wrap up. So you, I remember when we first talked about this at the workshop, you identified doing this because you could tell that some of your kids were ready for new challenges, uh, whether it be with topics or with the actual technologies, and some weren't. So you wanted to say like, okay, everybody... We've done Google Slides. Some of you are kind of still getting comfortable with it, and some of you are ready for something new. So you wanted to build in a new choice, right? Right, right. Right. Yeah, because you talked about that with your um, yeah. when you were teaching that you know each day as long as you had the next day, right? You know to keep going, and so that way the kids mm-hmm. that are ready to move on, or the kids that need to stay back a little bit, that there's opportunities for them to practice, right? And then keep moving. Yeah. So I'm cu- I'm curious what will happen when you when you launch this. I'm, I'm hoping you'll you'll share what what took place when you actually use this in the classroom because I know when some teachers with older students, especially like the middle school or high school age, start to use choice boards in class, the kids will always revert to the comfortable thing and not right. take any risks because they're. I think my my hunch is because they're just concerned about getting it done and getting it right and getting the grade on it. But I'm wondering if. First of all, with first graders that that haven't kind of learned the game of school yet, right. and with a teacher who's showing herself taking risks uh, in the classroom, if they're going to go like, "Ooh, I'm going to try the new tool," so I'm kind of curious how many students will do it, and and kind of what the ratio will be between students who should have moved on that did or didn't, you know what I mean? And students who maybe shouldn't have moved on to a new tool that did or didn't, I'm I'm really curious to see what will take place. And then the other thing I'm curious about is how do you see yourself doing this next year? So. I'm going to assume that with these kids coming in as first graders at the beginning of the year, that you've got varying levels of technology ability. I, I, I don't know the kindergarten teachers that you work with, but I'm sure you have some kids coming in that didn't go to kindergarten in your district. Maybe they went right, to like a right. like a private kindergarten or something like that. And so you've probably got some a base level technology use from some of the kids of like essentially zero. Right. So do you see yourself using the choice board right away or would you scaffold into it? How would that work? I think scaffolding into it would be better because I don't mm-hmm. want them to be, you know, overwhelmed by all of it. Okay. And I feel that like that's what we did at the beginning. Like what did we, our big goal was to log in. We logged into our Google accounts and then and it's funny, we made a video that I sent to the parents because we were all excited. All we did was log in. And I noticed that there were, you know, because Mr. Stitzel was there. He he happened to be with me and we're walking all around. You know, I always say the first day we're doing anything is my sweaty day because yeah. I'm constantly, you know, moving. And so um, I you noticed. You were the deodorant on that day, right? right? I know. Bring extra. <laughs> and so I noticed that three or four of the kids started leaning over and helping the others. Right. And I didn't know that they, you know, and then I go, Hey, if you logged in and you know what to do, help someone who doesn't. And Mm -hmm. they, they were helping each other. And it was interesting because, you know, a lot of people think, Oh, they don't know how to log in. They can't learn all those multiple logins. I mean, we started, I made some login lanyards. They used those. Then, I mean, within the first week, there was a big group of them that didn't even use their lanyard anymore. They already knew how to log in. Then the next thing we, we joined Google classroom and I had a question, did you join? Yes or no. And mm-hmm. then they did that and we just kind of scaffold things in. And so I think now, and again, last year I didn't really start until January. Mm-hmm. So this year I started, you know, right away in September, but I think now having a full year mm-hmm. um, that they're, there will be kids that are probably a little more advanced yeah. coming in, you mm-hmm. know, above the baseline. So just 
getting to know them and see what they know and trying some things and then adding on. And that's the great thing about choice boards right? and, and Google Classroom. You can differentiate it. You know, this group, you're getting this assignment. You know, you guys are doing this. They, they can work at different skill levels. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think it's going to, it's going to be interesting next year. Yeah. Cause again, I'll be, I'll be having a whole year and a half in and just seeing now that I'm learning more tools too right. and learning about choice boards, maybe I start with something that's a little smaller. Yeah. You know, maybe like two choices. I like you're saying I'm going to scaffold, but I'm also going to differentiate and I'm also going to like kind of formatively assess. Like, even though like we think of formatively assessing as formatively assessing, do they understand the content? But you're also saying, I'm going to formatively assess, do they understand how to use the technology? Right. Right. You're right. going to, you're going to watch and see like, maybe you get a, got to change it. Maybe you ramp it up or maybe you scaffold more or maybe you, you slow it down. Okay. Like you're, you're going to yeah. like look and see what's happening. Which is exactly what we do for writing. Right. You know, I, we always do writing on the first day. Mm-hmm. Let me see where they're at. You know, right. who's writing multiple sentences? Yeah. Who's just, you know, writing one word, you know, where, I mean, that's the same thing. And I think that's, what's awesome about technology that people don't realize that you're doing the same things, but the tool yeah. is different. I, that's something that primary teachers are so good at doing with content better, better than better at doing than higher level teachers are, are, are at doing, at least from my experience and myself as a middle school teacher, primary teachers are so good at assessing what their kids know and then moving from there to, to help them, yeah. you know, develop and differentiating and grouping and working <laughs> with t- kids at different levels. And, but they, but there's a fear of doing it with technology and you're saying it's, it's just like what Same I do thing. with reading. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. And, you know, and it's, and we have the benefit of having them all day mm-hmm. where like a high school teacher, maybe you just 40 minutes, right. you know, you don't see them. So we get to know these kids, I think, um, so well, you know, and that helps us too. And we're doing everything. We're doing language arts, math, science, social studies, you know, and, and the technology gives you ways that you can combine those together. Yeah. And, you know, just make it new, exciting, and... Today's super secret code is Sweaty Day. Missy says that her first day using any new technology in class is a sweaty day. So head over to eduducttape.com slash certificate and type in the super secret code sweaty day with or without a space in the middle to get your certificate of listening laughing and learning it's just really awesome and i'm excited to still be learning and i even i have tweet notifications for important people like you and an, other people and then i'm not important <laughs> i know and then you're you're tweeting i'm like ah. Jake, I don't have time to listen to this now. Stop giving me good ideas. I, I can't focus. You need to turn off the tweet notifications on me because I tweet way too much. <laughs> well, you know I go to bed like beyond early. So you, you wake up in the morning time. with like 10 notifications of things I tweet. Especially tweeted. on the um, the tweet. Um, the, the Twitter, the chat. Twitter <laughs> chat night, right? <laughs> It'll be like 48 <laughs> tweets. Turn off like, those oh, notifications. Okay. You're crazy. <laughs> but that's why I turn it on silent because even my team knows. They're like, we don't, we can text you because your phone's off and then I'll see it in the morning. Or see you later. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, remember, I made a goal. I'm going to try to do two Twitter chats before June. Okay. We're gonna so, the rest of the oh no, rest of the breakfast is gonna hold you to it. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have a a star chart with two two stars for Missy, one star for her first chat, and one star for her second chat. That'll be the extra coffee days, right? <laughs> extra oh. coffee days. You're gonna need you're gonna need that evening cup of coffee. <laughs> I totally would. I would. <laughs> well, Missy, I, I am I am not at all surprised that we have just recorded the longest mini episode of the oh, podcast no. between me and you because you're you're a blast to talk to. I your oh, your excitement you. for using technology in your classroom and learning and trying new things just just comes it's coming right through the microphone into my earbuds. <laughs> so I hope it's going oh, into everybody you. else's earbuds. I'm so glad you did this, uh, and and we're willing to redo the episode <laughs> after after that last one disappeared off of my hard drive. Yeah, but again, that's technology, right? Technology, that's the truth. With anything, it happens. Yeah. All right, so Missy, la- last thing, we don't have to take our selfie yeah. on air because we already took it. I'll just use the yes. old one that didn't erase. I checked, but the last <laughs> thing we do is you need to share your contact information for everybody so they could follow you on Twitter and all that kind of stuff and connect with you and and hold you accountable for your two Twitter chats. <laughs> 
<laughs> didn't um, didn't we remember last time? I couldn't remember the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I do remember. So on Twitter, it's at Mrs. Payton first. Okay. And on Instagram, and you know I'm looking it up right now. Right. Mrs. Dot Payton first. Mrs. So dot number Payton. one. Why did you? Is there an? Is there a Mrs. Payton first that d- didn't have the dot, and you had added a dot? I. It Who knows? must have been. I'm not sure. <laughs> we, and there it, is. Oh, Let's and meet her. <laughs> Let's connect with her. Um, a number one for first, not the word. Not the word first. Mrs. Yeah. Payton, P-A-D-E-N, one S-T first, right? That's right. That's or right. On, and- on Instagram, it's with a dot after after the missus. <laughs> Just, See, but I had, I knew, and this morning I said, wait, you asked me that last time and I didn't remember. And I'm like, I need to write that down. Have it on a sticky note. <laughs> but of course, then school started and I'm, nope. Where'd your sticky note go? You lost your sticky note and you had to look it up all over again. I didn't even write the sticky note. That's, where, that's what happened. <laughs> that's the First problem. grade. First grade. <laughs> First grade brain. Teacher brain. <laughs> that's right. All right, Missy. Well, thank you for doing this. Have a great day, okay? Thank you. You too. Thank you for listening to the Educational Duct Tape Podcast. Please visit eduducttape.com to join the discussion, share possible topics, inquire about being a guest, or contact Jake. And remember, duct is spelled with a T, not a quack quack K.